Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at maximum. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish to hear energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Amy. Hello. And we have Stuart. Hello. This week, we are talking DC movies. We had two big ones drop. We had Killing Joke drop on Blu-ray, so we can finally all sit down and watch that. And we had Suicide Squad drop at cinemas. So this is episode number 95. We are kicking it off with uh, Suicide Squad. Why not? So, Amy hasn't actually seen it yet, like always. She's not a very big cinema person. Um, no. Not live-action violence, anyway. Yeah. So, me and Stuart have seen it. So, Stuart, what do you think? Um, I think it dragged a bit. I think it dragged on way too much. Because, yeah, as always, we do the spoiler-free bit at the start, and then... We jump into spoilers a little bit later on. So we'll do spoiler free for Killing Joke and Suicide Squad, then we'll do the spoilery stuff after that. Just figured I'd clarify. I really, um. I've now learned that for Captain Boomerang, I'm gonna have to carry a pink fluffy unicorn around. <laughs> I, I even said to Jenny, uh. I even, cause, um. Because I, I, cause I don't know if you guys saw the news or not, but, um, Katana's coming to Supernova Brisbane. Nice. So I'm gonna, so I'm gonna go to a, 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 a like in Boomerang and be like, "So are you still, are you still looking for a boyfriend? Want to pat my unicorn?" Oh, God. <laughs> I just get, I just, I want to find a way to. I see you getting kicked out of Supernova. <laughs> I also see you getting chased around by a bunch of Deadpool's going, "Oh, a unicorn!" Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Jody's already laughed at the. Uh, uh, Jody already knew. Uh, uh, like, I told Jody at like after Suicide's got my. I'm gonna need to get a fluffy unicorn now. God damn it! <laughs> and she was like, "Yes, yes, you are." Uh, she also like, laughed. All that's going through my head is pink fluffy unicorn. Pink mm. fluffy unicorns dancing on rainbows. Yeah, it's all that's going through my head at the moment. Yeah, see, I want to rig my. Uh, I want to rig my jacket up so I've got a mini speaker, something like hidden somewhere, and then just have that playing the whole time while I'm holding the the unicorn. Oh god! It might be just to avoid you at Supernova at the end of this year. Just <laughs> like I normally do it anyway, but just double down on the reminding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but uh, back back to the let's get back. I'm trying to get back to topic. A um, little bit, a little bit back on topic. I think Viola Davis is quite possibly the scariest actress I've seen in a while. <laughs> Who was she? She again? was a man, Amanda Waller. Ah, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, because I already had watched her in um How to Get Away with Murder, and I loved her there. I'm like, oh, okay, she, she, <laughs> I knew she was good, but she is really good. Oh yeah. Um. Uh. What else? Um. Trying to go non-spoilery. Loved, loved um, El Diablo. I know a yeah. lot of people kind of found him a bit mad. I really enjoyed him. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. Uh, um, me personally, this is some, I, I, I'll, I'll focus in on this a little bit later in the spoilery section. This isn't spoilery stuff, but the thing I found about Suicide Squad was something felt like it wasn't meshing. If you know what I mean, like it, it didn't quite. Ah, uh, there were a lot of um, there was like a ton of scenes that were cut. Yeah, it, like it, it felt really sort of, to me, like Bill Smith, because Deadshot was in, and again, this will come up a lot, comparing the Arrow TV stuff and Suicide Squad. I apologise in advance, but ah. it felt, to me, Will Smith felt like Will Smith, he didn't feel like Deadshot. <laughs> Will Smith was just, it was just himself, just yeah. his badass self. <laughs> so, so, that was one, like Harley and Joker to me were spectacular. A lot, yeah. People are very opinionated on those two. Yeah. 
Um, you either really like them or you either hate them. There's still no middle ground at this point. Well, it's like the, so the ba- it's like, it's like bat flick. You either think he's the great, you think he's a really good Batman, or everybody hates him. And personally, I think he's a really good Batman. And I think these two inevitably will go down as one of the better Joker um, representations on screen. So, and personally, I think he's better than Heath. I really do. <laughs> that's, that says a lot, I know. But but watching Careful, the way boy, that... that, that them, them's fighting words for certain people. Careful. Oh, I'm well aware. Hey, I've pissed off a lot of people in this podcast. Mind you, pissing off people who worship the Joker, probably not the best idea. No, <laughs> it's probably the scariest fandom to annoy. Yeah. Well, you think about it, there's always a... Uh... One way or another with Joker and Harley. No matter which um, setting they're in. Yeah. So, I liked it how it um, it covered some of their backstory. Backstory! So the, the backstory stuff was kind of cool. Um, but yeah. So, it's still spoiler free at the moment. Comparing the Suicide Squad people from... The characters that were in this movie versus their portrayal in the Arrow Flash universe. Which one do you think portrayed the characters better? Um. Okay. Just gonna think who we've had. We've got Deadshot. Yeah. De- Deadshot, I prefer the TV one. I'm sorry, I do. Will Smith does not play a psycho yeah, no, killer. Actually, he doesn't... I kind of missed the, I can miss the TV one. Yeah. I just had to kill them off, you bastards. Yeah. It's all because of this movie. Yeah, it's like... I know, I know. Yeah. DC, why? Just why? Oh, yeah. Random well, note... Ne- they Tony... never had a killer croc in, um, yeah. in the TV. So, r- random note, really quickly, just while we're on the note of DC, why? Okay, for the record, my position on the whole Rotten Tomatoes thing is, what the fuck are you doing? No, oh, God. Jesus, people, we'll get, are you stupid? We'll get to that in the news, I know, but I want to touch on it here in the spoiler-free section. Oh, people are stupid. Yeah. It's... Okay. Yes, you have the freedom of speech to say Rotten Tomatoes should be shut down. Won't deny that for a second. You have that free speech. You have that ability. But your free speech ends when you take physical action to shut someone else's free speech down. That is when you come up against me. That is when you come up against everybody that fights for freedom. Because that's a very tyrannical act. Now, I actually had a falling out with someone online about this. Because they were like, yes, we need to shut them down because they're obviously blatantly biased. And it's like, no, they're not. And they're not... So they wanted to shut them down. I'm like, no. You, you, they've got a right to free speech. You can post your own review on the page. There is two sections, two Rotten Tomatoes. The professional critics and the normal people. And you can compare both. And a lot of times, the professional critics versus the normal people, they don't quite match. A lot of times they do. A lot of the times they don't. Depends on the movie. There's a lot of movies Rotten Tomato has reviewed that I've really enjoyed that have got really crappy review scores on there. My response is, oh well, they didn't like it. Boo hoo. DC Fanboys is, quick, set fire to everything. And it's a very inappropriate thing to do. Rant over. Maybe. I reserve the right to come back <laughs> to the rant. <laughs> <Yeah>. Objection. <laughs> <laughs> What's your objection, oh, boy? I kick your ass. <laughs> Throw you out the airlock. <laughs> no, people, is that people are just stupid. Yeah, so, it's yeah. just so for those who have no idea what the hell I'm rambling on about, because the three DC um, DCCU movies got such a low rating on Rotten Tomatoes, the DC fans have started Change.org petitions, plural, to have Rotten Tomatoes removed from the internet. Not joking. That is a that thing. That wouldn't surprise me, but they are... Everyone has an opinion. Yeah. Yeah. No. They just... It's, it's like... Going lunatic. I'm reserving the right to go back to the rent for, like, a second or two. Um, it's like Westboro Baptist Church. They're all dickheads. We all know they're dickheads. But they have a right to say what they want to say. And I will protect their right to say what they want to say, even though I disagree with what they're saying. Because they're dickheads. But that's not the point. <laughs> So, just like I don't agree with everything Rotten Tomato says, I will protect their right to say whatever the hell they want to say. Anyway, 
So, Stuart, back to the review of Suicide Squad. <laughs> Finally. Um, Bending over. So, back to the back to the, to the character side of things. Yeah. I definitely prefer... I didn't really... I think... For Captain Boomerang, I definitely think I prefer the movie one. Because I really didn't care for the one in the, in the Arrow Flash crossover. Yeah, uh, I'll grant you that. Captain Boomerang in the movie was definitely more fun. But I also saw elements I of Deadpool I now have my new in. favorite line if I ever seen LD Outlook cosplay. It's like, that shit on your face, does it wash off? Oh, God. Like, any time I see an LD Outlook, I'm just going to go up and do, use that line. Uh, I hate you just so much. I'm so going to get thrown out of Supernova by the, uh, at the <laughs> end of the year. Oh, yeah. Are you aiming for that? Fun? Are you yeah. aiming to be thrown out? <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm just becoming more and more like Captain Boomerang the more I watch it. Oh god, here we go. So yeah, so yeah, I, I must admit I did prefer the Captain Boomerang in the movie over the one in the TV show. Um, but that said, it still annoys me that DC's got two different fecking universes. Like, two mainstream media universes. They've got a half dozen different animated universes, but they don't really count, because only children uh, and I hardcore fanboys something... watch that. I saw something funny CW did. Oh, Supergirl. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen the poster or not. The Superman one? Yep. Yep. I took one look at that and just went... <laughs> Wording, people, wording! Uh, but for those who don't know, um, CW released a, a trailer poster for um, Supergirl, and, it, and on it says Superman is coming in Supergirl this fall on the CW. I'm like, oh my god, wording, people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're cousins, for I, fuck's sake. P, come on, PI, you should know better than that. I, th I think they, when they did, their minds weren't in the gutter. <laughs> I'm not so sure. No, it, 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 I, I've seen some pretty, pretty rough fanfics of su involving Superman and Supergirl. Well, they they have kissed before. In the comics. Yeah, that was before. That was before he knew it was a cousin. Yeah, but she knew. That was the weird kinda, part. Kind of like, kind of like Luke and Leia. Yeah. So, although I don't think Leia knew at the time. No. No, Leia <laughs> didn't know. So, yeah, um, I don't think any of them Yeah, I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> I just saw that, I'm just like, oh. <laughs> so stupid. I, I saw it this morning on Facebook, I was just like, oh, really, guys? Really? Just, just, wow. It's, all, it's, that, it's that moment where it's like a comma. All you needed was just a comma. Just, just, just... Or just change into two. Yeah. Like, it's not that hard. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway. Um, so, Killing Joke. I got that on Blu-ray and I watched that. Um, the first half of it was alright. And the back half of it, I don't know how true it was to the comic because I haven't actually read it yet. I'm still trying to get a copy. Um, the first half was all the back old stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, the first okay. literal 29 minutes and like like 35 seconds is just all the back girl stuff where she takes on a guy that is almost her Joker. Um, and sort of pushes her right to the edge. And then the second half is the Killing Joke story. Um, for those that don't know, Killing Joke is one of the most popular Batman stories of all time. And, and the... one of the most gruesome things you will ever read. Yeah. And this, the animated treatment for it, is one of the most unpopular animated treatments of Batman of all time. So. Which is kind of weird, considering that the story itself is... Again, it's so sort of... Okay, it's only a relatively new story, yes, but it's still iconic for both of those characters. Um, so. Anyway. Um, you've read the comic, Stuart. Well... I'll let yes. you do a sort of a breakdown of the comic before I do my movie review, just to make sure that the movie does line up with the comic, because, again, I haven't seen it. And you haven't seen Killing Jokes, so... No, I haven't. Yeah, I will, I will eventually, because I actually really want to get it, so... Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, Killing Joke um, came out in uh, 1988, 
Uh, it was written by um, Alan Moore and illustrated by um, Brian Botland. Just to get just to get that out of the way. Um, so this is basically. Oh yeah, just how... really, really, really quick. We'll go back to Suicide Squad spoilers after we finish doing this. Just saying. Oh yeah. So yeah. Ba- basically, this is this this comic series or this was the uh, oh, it's actually a graphic novel, I should say. Yeah, it's a short story, effectively. Yeah, is basically sh- um, the origin story for Joker. Yeah. And it is one of like Flashpoint's my favorite thing of all of all Disney DC comics. Not Disney DC. Disney comics. God, I've got to stop reading the books. Yep. Um, Why you're reading this Disney is... books, I don't know. Because I'm reading the Star Wars canon. Oh, yeah. Sure. Has nothing to do <laughs> with the princesses at all. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> no, um, hey, so yeah. This is my second favorite series of all time. This is written... And illustrated so magnificently, this book was well ahead of its time. So, ba- so basically, the, the plot summary is um, it just shows the backstory of Joker, and then um, modern day um, Joker basically kidnaps Gordon and tra- and uh, imprisons him in a an amusement park. So that that part's fairly faithful then. Yep. Um. And then, and then, and then, um, goes and visits Babs and shoots her, which we all know happens as that as well, because that's how she turns into Oracle. Yep. Um. And then Gordon gets stripped. I don't know if they take him naked or not. Um. Or... Well. Okay. I'm gonna interject with the the movie side of things now. So if you haven't seen Killing Joke and whatnot, just feel free to. Go watch it and come back. Otherwise, we're just gonna we're breaking gonna break it down right now, and then once we finish doing that, we're gonna go back to Suicide Squad. Um, so, in the movie, the first chunk of it is Batman hunt- and Batgirl hunting down this group of mobs, this group of gangsters, and one of them is constantly hitting on Batgirl and trying to drive her over the edge from hero to effectively villain. Um, every now and again, it sort of intercuts back to Batgirl's day job and um, talking about a new system the city's putting in place that puts cameras everywhere. Cut. Long story short, they eventually arrest him. She screws Batman on the roof after they have a big falling out. They seriously just punch and kick the crap out of each other. Batman very much holds back. Eventually she ends up on top of him and you don't actually see anything beyond her starting to take the the Batgirl suit off. She takes the cape off and then it sort of pans up and away and don't see anything. And it just cuts to her talking to some gay guy about it. I can't remember who... I don't know who the whole that's meant to be. Some random gay guy. Um, and then it picks up with Batman going to see Joker. Because he wants to have a one, one-on-one chat with Joker about why he feels that either he will have to be forced to kill Joker or Joker will kill him eventually. And he wants to sort of Make sure that when that happens, he's had a chance to talk it out beforehand. So he goes in, sees the Joker, realizes he's escaped again. Which point you see Joker with Mark Hamill. Oh my God, that voice is just. Oh, his Mark Hamill is. <laughs> Mark Hamill is the Joker, plain and simple. Yes. So anyway, um, so evil Luke Skywalker. That's why I'm calling Joker from now on. Um. No, I won't. That's mean. Um, Dark Side Luke Skywalker? Darth, jo- Darth Joker? Darth Joker. I'm going with Darth Joker. So Darth Joker um, is buying an amusement park and he does a thing to a guy that makes him all like skeletal but smiley bony face like Joker is. Um, and it's sort of in a cut with backstory explaining Joker's origin where he was... A guy with a wife and a kid was coming was on the way or something like that. And he was trying to get a job, couldn't get one. Um, so he tried to rob a place. Um, during that robbery, he was wearing the red hood mask and he got um, tossed into a vat dearly and somehow came out the other side in a pipe near the ocean. So yay pollution, I guess. Um, and when he took the, the red hood bucket dearly off 
Um, his face was made white and totally screwed up. At which point he found out that his wife had been killed. Or was it? Might have been slightly before they did the job he found out the wife had been killed. Um, then... So that's sort of the Joker origin story from there. He... Because Batman was there and scared him and he fell into the bat as a result. Um, from yeah. there, Joker went sort of a little bit Darth Joker. And um, you see him knock on Bab's door. The dad is there. They're talking about... Um, very subtly talking about Batman. Um, the door opens to... She opens the door. Joker puts a round right in her chest. Well, abdomen area. Um, and she goes down like a ton of shit. Obviously, she's crippled. Um, he gets kidnapped. Next we see is Batman at the hospital when they're making when they're sort of doing tests on her, and we see that she, she's definitely crippled. She's got no feeling in her feet whatsoever. Um, they use the standard pin and foot test to see if there's an unconscious reflex. There isn't, so they're like, "Yep, no, she's she's definitely crippled." Um, at which point Batman's like, "Yep, no, done with this." Um, goes off and find goes on a bit of a um, hunting spree around all of the different Darrow ends of town, um, beating the crap out of random thugs just because he wants to, and eventually finds out where Joker is. The whole this meantime, the Joker has um, the uh, commissioner dude stripped totally naked um, and is running him through an amusement park of horrors with all sorts of crazy shenanigans happening, um, including a phony court case where the Joker effectively tricks the commissioner into finding Batman guilty of being a bad guy as opposed to a good guy. He's like, look, see, there's only one bad day between you and me. That's all it takes is one bad day. And that's sort of his whole running thing. Eventually, Batman turns up, frees the commissioner. The commissioner's like, look, you need to bring him in by the book to prove to him that our way works. Um, Batman chases him off. A little bit of fisticuffs. Joker gets knocked to the ground. Batman's like, look, I want to talk. I don't want to... When I don't want you to end up killing me and I don't want to end up killing you sort of thing. And Joker's sort of... They have a bit of a heart-to-heart would be one way of putting it. Joker says the worst joke ever. They both laugh in credits. And, yeah. Is that true to the comic? Yeah, that's actually how the comic ends, is is the um, is that they laugh and then they just disappear into the, shat- into the night. Well, that doesn't even happen. They just stand there, laughing, and then that's it. It's just okay. straight to the But credits. yeah, the laughing, is, the laughing happens. Yeah. So, so I was like... We'll put it this way. You, you, Javar is one of our mutual friends. Um, we don't mention very often on the podcast. His response to... The, that ending was that was un- as unsatisfactory as eating a box of crayons. And my first thought was, how do you know what eating a box of crayons tastes like? <laughs> Secondly, what the hell? Thirdly, I don't really disagree with him that much. Well, that that's how it ended in the comics. They left it open. Oh, okay. The idea was they leave it open and make you think who's 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 sort of got the right of view and. St- stuff and then it sort of left it open for a sequel yeah which um which it kind of got but not really yeah it's sort of yeah um yeah there was a, it was a in 2007 there's a companion story um titled no joke yeah and um what it is it's um uh rip hunter sends booster gold back to try and um save barbara from getting shot yeah but you can't stop that because that's a fixed point in time where she's meant to get paralyzed yeah so, um, so it's it's sort of sort of. I, I've always I, I've always loved the comic. I'll be interested to see how they go uh, once I watch it. I'll be able to compare it better. Yeah. So I was hope I, I, I'd honestly expected. But you do to we dare seen talk it. about the infamous? Do we dare talk about the infamous scene that everyone is pissed off about? The sex scene. Oh yeah. Yeah. It, nothing happens. It doesn't show anything. It's like, oh no, they got really angry and fucked angry. Whoop de fucking do! <laughs> like it's the, the the version that is in Australia. You see the camera looking at 
Like, they fisty cuff for a little bit because she's upset at him for stopping her from being involved in the case with the guy that's, that's messing with her. And so they fisty cuff for a bit and he very much holds back and it's sort of like just, cool, she's taking it oh, out yeah. on me. I'll sort of just let let it go through to its natural end. She'll calm down. <laughs> Bruce could easily take her down. Oh, yeah. But a long story short, she gets him to the... She actually manages to get him to the ground and pinned to the ground. They start making out and then it sort of pans up from oh, just sort of above his point of view looking towards her. And you see the camera sort of continue to pull up from there and you see her take off the the cat her cape and start sort of looking like she's mucking around with the suit a little bit. And then later on it cuts to a gay guy and it's like, oh yeah, about three weeks ago we did it and he hasn't talked to me since. That's literally it. That's the entirety of this, <laughs> this controversy. And I'm like, what the hell, guys? Why are you at 11? You should really, really be at maybe a 2 or a 3? It doesn't really matter. <laughs> I don't I don't care. It doesn't bother me. So, I just don't because understand. Because there's been multiple storylines where, um, especially in um, uh, Batman Beyond, yeah. the, the TV series that was set in the future, um, they actually got married and stuff. Yeah, your little baby Wayne's running around, eventually. No, it didn't work out. No, they didn't have kids. No, it didn't work out. Oh, God damn it! Bruce was just too... Just couldn't get away from being the Batman. He just got too involved. Yeah. Shock, horror, gasp. Bruce is obsessed with being Batman. No, Bruce is just a mask. Batman is who he really is. <laughs> that is so Bruce true. Bruce is obsessed with justice. I must find the justice. <laughs> that is... Well, that, is, sure. <laughs> that is sadly true. Um, yes, yeah. it is. It's like, uh, so, um, so anyway, overall, I found the Killing Joke because I don't know the comic, um, and I wasn't sure if it sort of finished where the comic finished. I assumed it did. I found. Yeah, it... that's basically how the the comic ends. It's just the, the tell the joke and the laughter. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it feels all right. It wasn't sort of, wasn't put it this way. It wasn't what I expected. Um, <laughs> overall, I'll give it a seven out of ten. I'll be generous. I'm in a bit of a generous mood right now. I may not be after I finish describing um, Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad, but right now I'm in a generous mood, so I'll give it a seven out of ten. Um, if it's true to the comics enough, then I'll be willing to raise that to an eight because. I do believe in if you are true to that story, then the core of that story, then yeah, I'm in favour of that. Um, so yeah, and the, to be honest, the, I can't. The sort of the the, the the when Batgirl and Batman sort of hook up, it does set up why Batman goes a little bit off the deep end um, when she's found to be crippled later on. Yeah. So anyway, stop. Um, uh, again, I haven't seen this yet. I, I will really do want to get this and watch it one, eventually. Um, so I can't give it a score, but as I said, The Killing Joke is my second favourite, um, comic, uh, of all time behind the Flashpoint series, so. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, cool. Now let's go back to Suicide Squad with full spoilers. Um, if you haven't tuned out yet, which I'm genuinely surprised, but well, I'm the, I'll keep going. Pretending that you're still here. Um, thank you for staying with us and putting up my random incoherent ramblings. Yay! So, Suicide Squad. Spoilers free. No, not spoiler free. Spoilers on. Um, what did you think? Spoilers on? Yeah. You, spo feel free. Just use spoilers. God damn, I'm so happy they put the, the, the El Diablo second form in. God, I was so happy. That was pretty cool. That was probably one of I my was like, favorite I parts. I've gone... Oh yeah, no, I'm so happy they put that in. Again, I'm really surprised that people found him mediocre. I really loved his story in it. Like, sort of how he, he didn't want to use his powers, he struggled to use his powers, and then by the end of it, he's like, okay, I've got to do this. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's time to go full... Develop... That is character development in a movie. Why are you nitpicking? Yeah. Well, put it this way. He... Because they want to. The way the transformation sort of pulled off was almost like Naruto going, yep, that's it, QB, let's do this shit. And it just sort of goes, bang! 
full transformation. Yep, it's done, boys. Here I come. Fisty cuffs with another ancient god. It was cool. Yeah. I liked it. I loved um. I loved Enchantress. I absolutely loved the costume designs for you Enchantress. Did? Oh, I'm okay. The way she looked, yeah. At the the big sort of fight at the end where she's standing in front of the smoke machine thing, whatever the fuck that was meant to be. Um, <laughs> I think the way that she was sort of moving and stuff looked really fucking weird. Like I, could, my brain just couldn't process why she was moving in such a weird way. I was like, "What the <laughs> hell? This this doesn't make any sense. What is going on?" Um, yeah, no, I think the costuming play everything was fantastic. Oh yeah, she she looked good as Enchantress, but I just mean when she was sort of doing the summoning machine bit and she was sort of doing that weird look and dance thing, that was really fucking strange. You know what it reminded me of? It looked like the Z move. It looked like the um the Pokemon Sun and Moon Z um Z moves. It really did. <laughs> oh, nice. Sun and Moon. Those are gonna be interesting. Yeah. Oh, I just want a giant. I just want to see the long neck executor cosplay, and so I'll be happy. Yeah. Uh, just. <laughs> That's all I need. That's you, all I need. And then I'm happy. You've seen the meme online where it's all the dragon Pokemon sitting at a table. And Charles is like, "Hey guys, could I join you?" It's... And it's like, "No." <laughs> it's like, "No, no, no. We only we have we only take proper dragons here." And just the executor's and then executor head come... just comes crashing down on the table. Like, hey guys. Oh, guys. And, 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 and just see. Um, Dragonite looks at Charizard and goes, get over here. Just, just get over here. <laughs> Fill the seat <laughs> really quickly. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, <coughs> back on topic. Overall, I mentioned, uh, I mentioned at the start, Will Smith is dead shot. I don't know why, but he doesn't jive <laughs> as a psycho killer. He really doesn't. It's Will Smith. He's, he, he's he can't do psycho. To help his daughter survive. Yeah, uh, uh, um, he's just trying to make sure his daughter gets to go through college and stuff. I understand it. Oh, I understand that. I don't he's disagree guy, with he's that. He's a bad guy for the right reasons. But he doesn't come across as the psycho assassin. Like Deadshot in the TV show came across as the psycho assassin, as someone you don't fuck with, or he will kill you in a second without hesitating. Will Smith was yeah. just—he came across as Will Smith. I'm sorry, he did. And to me, <laughs> as much as I love Will Smith in literally everything else, Will Smith in this movie, for some reason, didn't jive, and I actually thought it was the low point of the movie for me. I'm sorry, Will. I really am. I love you. I do. But in Suicide Squad, just something about it didn't work. I'm sorry. Um, the, the Captain Boomerang was pretty good. Um... The random oh, cruel I saw a really guy? interesting um, I saw a really interesting rumor about Joker. Yeah. And I know you're gonna completely say no to this and I agree. But there's a rumor that um you know in Batman vs Superman how I had the Robin suit? Yeah. They're saying that that um Jason Todd got turned into the Joker. Hi. Yeah, I know. It's horrible. I know. Because isn't it him that the Joker tries to transform into a, a baby version of Joker? Yeah, yeah. Because they show that in Batman Beyond: The Return of Joker. Yeah. Because that's when Bar like, cause that's when Barbara comes in, and that's all that storyline. Yeah. Um, I say no, no, absolutely not. Just it's no. not. It's not. Just no. But I think it'd be an interesting way if. If it was, I think that'd be a really interesting way to bring the Robins into the universe. Yeah. Exactly. Again, it's not... Uh, I say no, but that wouldn't surprise me, knowing DC's writers. Yeah, they... They, the, they seem to make all of the wrong decisions. <laughs> Sorry, but they do. Um, <laughs> they do. So, now, uh, a high note for that movie, for me, personally, I know I said it earlier, the low point was... Will Smith, for whatever reason. I think it was written as if we were looking in from his point of view. Yeah. Like, he was... Yeah, and that, that doesn't really work. Like, if you look at all of the Marvel superhero mashup movies, there is no one person's point of view that you sort of look in from, that you try and sympathise with. You, So, yeah. Um, anyway. Um, Joker, and, Harley? Joker and Harley was definitely the highlight for me. 
Um, they were absolutely oh, Margot spectacular. Robbie's. Margot Robbie is fantastic. Oh, yeah. The, the only criticism I have of that is at one point when they're told to gear up, you see Harley... Uh, you actually see it in the trailer, her putting, sort of getting dressed. She picks up her trademark hammer, bounces it on her shoulder, says a quip, and then it's a baseball bat. <laughs> and you never see the hammer again. It's gone. <laughs> I thought you were just going to make mention of the um, the tracksuit. Oh, that? Nah. That was hilarious. Oh, she's just hanging I thought, that, I thought that was great that they actually showed her with it on. It's like, hey! Yeah. Cannon! Yeah, <laughs> I know. It was, it was like, well... That was just for, that was just fan service. Oh, that was pure fan service. Um, so, yeah. But, but yeah, just... She picks up the hammer, bounces it on her shoulder, it cuts away to Will Smith, it cuts back, and she's holding a baseball bat. It's like, there was something in the middle there that's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Either A, she could turn hammers into bats, which, given later on in the movie, it's not necessarily surprising, or B, that was one of the extra pieces of footage they filmed just to show people that, look, she has a hammer. And it's gone. <laughs> so, um, so let's start at the, at, the very, at the very beginning and try and break it down. We've got about 10, 15 minutes, so... Break. I still find it interesting they thought it was a great idea to put all the villains in one spot. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it sort of worked out and in the end. Can, and think that can control them. Yeah. It sort of worked out in the end. Not really for which, but yeah, anyway. Um, so the, <laughs> the basic premise was that um, Walla was trying to get a team together of villains. They were originally going to do this in Arrow, and then DC Movies were like, no, we're doing this, go fuck yourself. And Arrow was like, oh, fine. Um, which is why they killed off all of the Suicide Squad members in Arrow. Not the point. Um, so, it starts off with her trying to build the team and setting up the team. It also shows some stuff with um, Deadshot. I think Deadshot's at the very beginning. He mounts a dealie on a wall and he says to a guy, look, give me the money and I'll kill this guy. And the guy's like, no, I won't give you the money. He's like, give me the money. I won't give you the money. Give me the money. You've only got 20 seconds. Give me the money. And the money's in the account. And it's like, no bank transaction has ever been that fast. Takes days, people. Days. What the hell? And he's like, now because you're a dick, double it. And the guy's like, go fuck yourself. He's like, well, you've already given me some money. I could just take it and leave without killing this guy. And he's like, fine. Puts more money in. And then Dodge goes, pew! Bounces the bullet off a wall into the guy and kills him. And then immediately fucks off. Um, only to get his ass handed to him by Batman a, li- Batman a little bit later on. Um, we see Waller talking about all these different criminals that they've got locked up. We see um, Batman chasing um, Joker in the supercar with Harley. And a bit of backstory to Harley and um, Harley and Joker, which was really cool. I love that backstory stuff. I even love the fact that they called him Batsy. Yeah. Like, yes! I know, right? That was cool. Um, and then eventually, she, and she calls him Mr. J a couple of times, yeah. which was and, and really cool. I was like, wow! And he's like, but I can't swim, Mr. J. And he's like, yep, we're going to the drink. Splash. Um, he, the Joker, teleports away, I'm assuming. That's how he <laughs> I him. don't know. There's, there's a lot of stuff that I don't understand. Yeah. I'm just going to go with Joker teleports away. Um, Harley's in, like, stuck through the front window of the car underwater. Batman gets down there, tries to give us some oxygen. She goes psycho at him, so he just goes... Whack! And just knocks her the fuck out. Um, drags her up to the surface, lays her on the ground, does sort of CPR. Um, she gets thrown away. Uh, see, Wallach drops Batman clues on um, where Deadshot's gonna be with the daughter. Um, drops down and is like, look, just don't do this in front of her. Just surrender and, and come with me. And he's like, no, I must sort of fight you off and tries to fight and the little girl stands in the way and she's like daddy no and he's like fine I won't do it anymore and that's sort of his turning point from psycho killer to good guy I guess um and so he surrenders and goes to Batman you see Captain Boomerang are sort of robbing a bank and um just Flash rocking up which was a really cool little little cameo for Flash uh, Flash rocking up, and he's like, 
It's like one second I was, one second I was minding my business just near a bank, and then there was a red, red blur, and then the bank was, and then I was tied up in the bank. I don't know what happened. It's like wow, just, just stop it, stop it, Captain Boomerang, stop it. Uh, then, I still not sold on the suit yet. The Captain, the the Flash suit. Flash suit. Yeah. yeah. It, it looks very Iron Man. I'm sorry, it does. It really does. Like it's a, it's more of an armor than a suit. Yeah. So. Isn't but isn't Flash's suit meant to be pretty much latex? Yeah. It's yeah. going to be skin tight, air resistant, and a jagged metal suit like that is not very good for passing through air. It's really sucky, actually. In fact, most speeds the suits are actually made out of the Time Force. Yeah. Especially um, if it's the Rebirth comics, because they brought back um, ginger. They brought back um, ginger hair. Um, Wally West, yeah. and, he, and and he's no longer Kid Flash. He's the Flash, and you see him running. He comes back in the Kid Flash outfit. He's running, and the Speed Force physically changes his outfit into a Flash outfit. Yeah. So yeah. Um... So may- maybe it's a Speed Force thing. It could be. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Um... Anyway, maybe Justice League will explain that. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. So then we sort of kick off with her explaining. Look, we found the, the some archaeologist, some Tomb Raider chick found uh, <laughs> this this vessel, and she got possessed by a witch. And as long as we control the witch's heart, which is in this special box right here, which allows me to stab it with whatever the fuck, stab it with something, I can control the witch, and she'll do exactly what I want her to do. Because that will never end badly. Um, so that's Enchantress sort of introduced. Then, yep. long story short, shock, horror, gasp. Enchantress betrays them. Um, releases the brother, which is the thing in the trailer down in the um, subway. Destroying the subway. The train. Well, Enchantress's clothes are interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or what little of clothes she wears. Yeah, the, the, the misty stuff that is her clothes. Okay, we've got to really speed it up. We don't have much time left. Um, no. <laughs> so then... And there's some important news. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so then they... So Enchantress betrays them, uses the brother to sort of become immune to the heart stabby bullshit. And then they gather the Suicide Squad, which three days later take... Go to Middle City? Or what the, what the fuck city was it? Uh, it wasn't Central. Yeah, I know it wasn't Central. It was... It was one of the uh, I think si- it was Midwest. I think it was Midwest. Yeah, it might be Midwest City. Something like that. Um, and she's like, oh, they don't worship gods anymore. They worship machines. And I'm like, yeah, we kind of do. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the, have you seen Pokemon Go? Um, anyway. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't chuck, chuck a Trump joke somewhere in it. Yeah. So they then um, gather the Suicide Squad, you see them all gearing up, and it's like, yeah, well, you've got explosives in your head, they're the side of a rate of, size of a rate of grass, blah, blah, blah. And every now and again, it has cut away to Joker, trying to find a way to get Harley back. Um, but, and then they sort of flying into, wherever they're flying into, they get shot down by something? What the hell shoots them down? So, I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't understand what I, happened. I, my, guess, my guess is when they're gathering all the metal, I'm guessing they may have g- gathered a turret or two. Yeah. But yeah, so something, uh, long story short, something shoots them down. Don't know what. They crash, the helicopter rolls and does all sorts of shenanigans, and they just casually walk out of it like it was nothing. Um, and <laughs> What a ride. Yeah. So they all, they get all their gear and they fuck off into the city to have a big fight scene with rock zombies they look like rock zombies i'm going with rock (laughs) zombies um and the whole point of the mission is to get in get an asset and get get the asset to evac and then get the hell out so they fight their way into the city get to the building get to the top of the building this whole time get into the asset we'll get to the asset in a minute um the whole time harley's talking to joker and deadshot knows what's happening with Harley and Joker. Um, Joker has kidnapped the scientist that made the... Oh, no. Back up. Back up a little bit. Captain Boomerang convinces Mr. I'm a wall climber guy that 
the, the explosive is definitely a lie. So Mr. I'm a wall climber guy tries to escape, at which point they blow his head off. And oh, yeah. Captain and Boomerang's just like, body in the air. Yeah. And Captain Boomerang's like, yep, okay, not going to try that anymore. Let's get back on topic, shall we? Um, yeah. So, anyway, they, they're in the building, and they find the asset who turns out to be Shock Horror Gasp Waller. Um... Who then and they are not happy. Who then turns around and kills like half a dozen FBI agents. It's like, well, they, were, they were, didn't have clearance to be here, so they're dead now. It's like, um, whoa, lady. Who is the good guy in this story? <laughs> what the hell? There's no good guy. Come on, it's a suicide squad. When is there a good guy in suicide squad? Relatively speaking, relatively speaking. She's meant to technically be a good guy. Um, so yeah, so... Anyway, point is, they then... They're incredibly pissed that they've just risked their lives to save her of all fucking people. Get her to the roof. Um, the helicopter rocks up and shock her at gasp. It's been taken over by the Joker, who proceeds to free Harley and thanks to the help of the scientist he stole earlier, disables the bomb in her head so they can't sort of blow her head up. And she's on hanging from a rope under the helicopter as the helicopter fucks off. Um, and then... He's like, Deadshot, take her out. So Deadshot lines her up, takes the shot. He's like, oops, I missed. And they fly away. Harley gets up into the helicopter with Joker. And Joker and her have a very, I want to say touching moment. But it's really more of a really kind of fucked up touching moment. Anyway, point is, helicopter gets... Waller's like, they can't steal my helicopter. I'm going to shoot, get him shot down. A fighter jet turns up, which I can only assume is the fighter jet that shot them down, origi- shot down the other helicopter originally, because... Well, it, I'm guessing so. It, it doesn't make any fucking sense for that to have happened, but maybe they're going to have a 20-hour extended edition of this movie with all of the Joker stuff in it, that's how it makes fucking sense? Who the fuck knows? The point is, um, the, they get shot down and shock her at gasp, Harley gets thrown out of the helicopter, survives a bullshittingly ridiculous fall onto a roof of another building nearby, and Joker is last seen disappearing into a helicopter of fire explosion. Um, so Harley re- regroups with everybody down on the street, and they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna take out the witch now because we can't get the fuck out." And she's and Waller is just, Waller is fucked off and dumped us here and abandoned us, and she's been taken hostage, and the witch is using. Uh, Waller's knowledge of all the secret bullshit in this world to destroy all the bullshit in this world um, to try and take it over so we're going to go in and we're going to fight them to try and stop them so that's what they do they go in, they kick some ass they get thrown around, Diablo goes absolutely nuts and transforms and which looks fucking spectacular eventually gets his ass kicked because you're going up a, you, while you have juice Diablo you don't have god level juice um, so then that guy gets blown the fuck up and then they fight a, effectively Nightcrawler, a female Nightcrawler teleport bullshit where she sort of teleports around and just sort of tries to stab at them from a distance. It's like, I'm just thinking, teleport the, si- the sword inside them. Teleport the sword inside them. Why aren't you teleporting the sword inside them? What the hell? <laughs> you can teleport anywhere. That'd be too easy. Teleport right behind them and just go, cat Done. Um, anyway, so they, they fight her off, eventually defeating her, um, and she gets turned to stony rock stuff. The boyfriend, who was the soldier, which I totally forgot to mention until just now, was like, Oh my god, we killed the archaeologist chick, blah blah blah, and shock her aghast, she does the whole Ghostbusters thing and breaks out from inside, and she's like, I'm still alive, but the witch is dead. Yeehaw, ding dong, the witch is dead. Um... <laughs> All of the shit comes raining down from the sky and somehow doesn't kill anyone. Well, anyone more. Anyone important. Yeah, anyone else that's sort of not dead already. So, um, and then everyone's like, yep, cool, done with that. Walla rocks up and she's like, yep, okay, cool, you guys did your job. We're going to go take you back. If you've all had ten years removed from your prison sentence, go to the boomerang's like, ten years off three life sentences. Yeah, I see that really making a difference. Um... And they all negotiate for extra little quirks. So Deadshot gets to see the daughter again. and But he then gets he then surrenders himself to go back to prison so that she gets all the bonuses that um, like of college and all that sort of stuff. So she gets all the best of the best sort of thing. 
Um, I can't remember what happens to Captain Boomerang. The crocodile gets some cool stuff. Harley Quinn gets a coffee machine because... Or an espresso machine. <laughs> it's like... Okay. Whatever. It's like, all the random shit to ask for, you ask for a fucking espresso machine. What the hell? Hey. She like, enjoys good coffee. Um, so. Like Harley needs coffee? Yeah, that's my point. <laughs> maybe maybe it does the reverse tour. Yeah. That does, maybe. That does happen to some people. Um, so anyway... So it cuts back to, or it shows all of them back in prison, doing what they were doing sort of before the whole incident happened. Um, and then, right as things are about to be over, the wall explodes of Harley, in Harley's cell, and a shock horror guard, the Joker has managed to teleport away from death again, and is breaking her out of prison. And she's like, yay! And then credits. Um, and then, did you hang around in the credits? Yeah, yeah, I, I knew that was a post credit scene. Yeah. Well, mid credit scene. Oh, yeah, mid credit scene. Yeah. Um, so, they do all the big name stuff, and then before the, the black screen and all of the kajillion normal people get thrown up, uh, there's a mid credit scene with Bruce talking to Waller, getting all of the different names and details on the, just, the future Justice League members. Which was pretty cool. Um, so, yeah. So, there, you've, you've now heard an abridged version of Suicide Squad poorly told by a crazy Australian how do you feel? <laughs> sadly it probably makes more sense than the actual movie but we won't go yeah. there so um overall I would give okay after watching Batman vs. Superman the extended edition and probably the third or fourth time I've lowered my score on that down to a what I feel is generous, which is a 5 out of 10. Um, <laughs> and comparatively, I will give this a 6.5 out of 10. Until you I watch it over and over again, then I'll lower. Yeah, I can't <laughs> quite bring myself to give it a 7. I just can't. Uh, but it, by, I can. by, by rights, it should probably be 5.5, but Joker and Harley, to me, lifted the bar enough to make it a 6.5. I'm putting it at 7. Um, I love the love most of the casting. Yeah, I think it's sad that a lot of the stuff, a lot of the scenes got cut because it would add a heck of a lot more context to the movie. Yeah. So yeah, like I said, I'm hoping for at least a 20 hour extended edition to be released by DC. <laughs> Because that's what it feels like. It should be a twenty-hour movie. It really does. I'm gonna say, come Christmas, we'll probably find out. They'll probably bust it on just in time for Christmas. Yeah. Or they'll do what they did with Batman vs Superman and try and pump it out next week. <laughs> yeah. It was only what two months after Batman vs Superman bombed that a ridiculous extended edition was released on Blu-ray. So that means two months from now, it's, yeah, October. I can handle that. So that's what I said. In time for Christmas. Yeah, that's that's two months before Christmas. If I say in time yeah. for Christmas, I mean like Decemberish. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's quickly move on to the news because there's a couple. Oh yeah. Four big things we need to cover. Uh, big thing is Star Wars trailer on Friday. Yay! Whoop, whoop. We can cover that next week. Woo! Yeah, and um, so yeah, getting a new Rogue One trailer. Um, it is confer- This is confirmed by um by uh Lucasfilm. It's gonna um it's gonna air in America during their Olympics coverage, so it'll be on TV somewhere. And it will. It's a new trailer. It's not the sh- shitty Comic Con one. Not the not the shitty behind the scenes. No, well, actually, no, it wasn't shitty. It was awesome. But it's not that. <laughs> Sorry, I just want to see Darth Vader. I just want to hear Vader's breathing. That's all I need. Uh, I just need to hear the asthmatic cis world. Issues. Just all of the issues. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, let's move on to No Man's Sky, because uh, No Man's Sky's gotten a lot of uh, news lately. Just a little bit of a lot of news. <laughs> um, so yeah, it comes out tomorrow for uh, for us, and uh, the devs are already talking about uh, what's in, in, this, in store for the future of it. Um, they said that there's going to be a day one patch that's going to fix up a lot of things because there's been a lot of leaked, um, a lot of people are getting leaked versions of the game, which isn't the complete game. Yeah. So they're going to fix that up. And they said probably in like a couple of months time, they're going to add base building into the game, which would be really cool. Nice. 
So yeah, they're in this for. I think they're going to be in this for a long haul, and I think this is going to be a great game, and I cannot wait to put my last hours into it tomorrow. Oh yeah. So my my plans for tomorrow are slightly different. I'm going to the Gold Coast to chase down the elusive fossil Pokemon on the beach. There's a fossil Pokemon on the beach? Yeah, that's where you huh. find the fossil Pokemon on beach. Oh. Why not just go to South Bank? There's a beach there. There's yeah, not as many spawn. Um, for you, the, actually, the best place for you to go would be either be South Bank or Red Cliff. Yeah. Oh, this is cool as well. Um, Transformers, the animated movie, like the one that was back in the 80s, is 30 years old. Wow. Yeah. And that movie still stands the test of time. That movie is still better than all the Michael Bay movies combined. Yep. So, in other words, it was made when I was born, pretty much. The year I was born. Yeah. Yep. That's scary. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. What's scary is looking back, like I did uh, not that long ago, and thinking, holy shit, I'm almost 30. That is scary. I turned 30 this year. I'm, tw- I'm 25. I hate all of you. Well, <laughs> do it more than Amy. I can't help it. <laughs> it's okay. Besides, I probably look 30. One, one day you'll catch up to me. Like, I probably, never. Look th- I probably look older than you. <laughs> probably act older than me. Okay, no. any other news? <laughs> um, so, Star Wars... <laughs> uh, Star Wars Rebel is going to... Pre- uh, Star Wars Rebel Season 3 is going to pre- premiere uh, September 24th with an hour-long um, episode. So, like what they do normally. Nice. So, they'll, introduce- they'll probably introduce Thrawn and everything and so uh, set up everything for the season. So yeah, cannot wait! Oh yeah. Give me my rebels! Give me everything! I miss it all! Oh yeah, um, and apparently Lucas, Disney and Lucasfilm have been in talks with ABC to do a live action sh- um, TV show as well. Yeah, I heard that. I haven't been able to get too much detail on what it would be, but if anything, I'd love to see some sort of Boba Fett things. I think it'd be great. Yeah, Boba Fett would potentially work as a TV series. I think either Boba Fett or like Leia growing up, learning all the pol- all um the political stuff. No, that would be bad. <laughs> pass, pass on that. Um, if I had to have a TV series set set at any time, just not Je- just not Jedi. I was gonna say Sorry. Knights of the I... Old Republic. Okay, as I could a, live with that. As but... a TV series, would be pretty fucking cool. It'd be a really good way right. to do that time period. I just think Boba Fett, like, it would make the most sense, I think. If they're not yeah. going to do a movie, then you do the TV show. Yeah. The, 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 the problem with that is TV, TV shows, um, the, the budget-wise are relatively low compared to movies. So I would think the better option would be something like a young Han Solo TV series. Cause you're gonna but they're have doing epi- the movie, so I don't know if they'll do that. Yeah, I know. Um, but you need something like, like, again, with Stargate, Star Trek, you a lot of those sci-fi series, the way they kept the budget low was by setting it on a ship. So they could have whole episodes set on the ship because you've got the sets, they're cheap, they're there. It's a lot easier to do it that way. Um, you know it would be hilarious? Just do Admiral Akbar. Yeah. There's a trap! There's a trap! There's a trap! That's the title of the show. Star Wars. There's a trap! There's a trap! It's every episode, there's a trap! So, <laughs> so any other big news? Uh, nope, that's pretty much... Pretty much uh, it. Okay, um, yeah. for those that don't know, po- uh, Oz Comic Con is now doing a Pokemon Go walk. Um, oh, God. Yeah, it's effectively going to be run along South Bank, so... Oh, the normal people, they're going to just shit bricks. There's already thousands of people signed up to do this thing. Yep. <laughs> it's it's going to be great. It's going to go from the convention centre... To Kang- all the way down past Kangaroo Point, across the Story Bridge, and then back through the gardens. It's going to be a long-ass walk. Yep. Um, it's going to terrorise us, what, on, at Comic-Con week, on Comic-Con weekend? Yeah, that's on. That's happening on Sunday. So, if I remember correctly. Okay, that's going to terror. Yeah, that's definitely going to terrorise the normals. Yeah. So, anyway, that's it for this week's podcast. Thank you for tuning in, the literal one of you. Yeah, you get that. Um, so, next week's podcast, we are doing top five something. What was it? Uh, was it battles? Sci-fi battles? 
Sci-fi top, battles. No, no, no. Superhero battles. Top five superhero fights. Superhero fight. battles. Superhero yep. battles. That's so, it. But you're not allowed anime. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll catch you then. Um, make sure you check oh, out Facebook.com. Point. Fuck. Facebook.com slash safe side side. Facebook.com slash safe side podcast. And all that sort of stuff. Have fun. Bye. Bye. Now. Make sure you check Meow. out Nobility. Nobility is awesome. Nobility is awesome.